Something rather massive is about to happen with World of Warcraft. Okay, I have to talk about Hearthstone, but stay with me because Hearthstone for a while has made some of us WoW players kind of envious. We're jealous of its ability to drive to the core of the setting of Warcraft and have a lot of fun with it. Want to go find a Naru in the Barrens? Done. What about that time when we went to Skolomance before it was a dungeon full of necromancers? Oh, but no, actually, Kel'Thuzad is the headmaster of the school, and it is definitely the beginning of the Cult of the Damned. Or, how about that time, we helped arch-villain Rafam and his League of Evil steal Dalaran, the whole city, so he could use it to steal the Plague of Undeath. Well, a bunch of wacky stuff's happened, but get ready for more mad schemes because Rafam is in Dragonflight. There are also some returning members of the, uh, the League of Explorers who have some pretty damn big lore in Hearthstone. So are these fun inclusions, or does this point to something bigger? Well, that actually points to something extremely important. Rafam's big plan to take over Azeroth with the Plague of Undeath was actually to resurrect Galakrond, a potential primary villain of Dragonflight. So, is Hearthstone canon? Did all of that happen? No, not at all, in my view. Instead, I think Hearthstone is a fun narrative playground. It's one where Blizzard can invent new elements and see how they feel, but where those elements can be promoted into the real game. So let's find out just who these characters are and just how realistic this threat of resurrecting Galakrond is. Hearthstone's narrative is way out there, and its arch-villain is just as extreme. Rafam is the implored, supreme archaeologist to himself, arch thief to his enemies, and he was introduced with the League of Explorers adventure. Now, in that, Bran Bronzebeard and the Explorers League are looking for something. They're looking for the Staff of Origination, a powerful Titan artifact that could animate anything. Maybe you could tell where that could be going. After a long adventure, its three sections are brought back to the Hall of Explorers, but Rafam is lying in wait and he steals it. He then wreaks havoc around Ironforge, animating dinosaur skeletons and weapons and all sorts of things. He makes a fiendish getaway, but manages to also steal Arthas Menethil's signet ring. Slighted by Bran and the Explorers League, Rafam plans revenge. He brings together a group of villains named the League of Evil, and the plan is pure evil genius. The first step was kicking the Council of Dalaran out of their city, and then taking the whole place on a joyride to Ulden. <laughs> the League of Evil then stole the Plague of Undeath from a Titan Vault. This plague is different as well. It was locked in Uldum alongside a plague of murlocs, madness, death, wrath, and flames. It's capable of resurrecting stuff that even the Lich King would struggle to raise. So, Rafam then rockets Dalaran to Dragonblight, where he defeats the Dragonflights themselves and uses the curse on the bones of Galakrond. Galakrond does resurrect, but he's got no time for Rafam's comical villainy and immediately goes about his usual, which is of course destroying Azeroth. There are two outcomes to this story, one where Rafam has to take Galakrond down himself, and one where Reno Jackson along with the Dragonflights do it, and we'll talk about that Reno guy in just a second. But for Rafam, there's no way that this stuff could be canon. I mean, it's obviously not happened yet, and it's not likely at all to happen like this in the game. So we need to figure out how much of this will make it into WoW and what sorts of things will actually go on. Don't worry, it still goes deep, and Blizzard looks like they're keeping a fair amount of the madness and fun. Dragonflight is an adventure first expansion. We're not going there as the vanguard against a legion invasion or going there to just fight a war with the Horde or something, no. The Horde are led to the Dragon Isles by the Reliquary and the Alliance by the Explorers League. And these groups have kind of joined together. Now, of course, the League's leader, Bran Bronzebeard, has always been on the forefront of Alliance expeditions. 
he's fun. He's a world famous explorer, but well, we really haven't got much of Bran in recent years at all. I mean, he's kind of just about at significant Titan events or there to teach uh, archeology span to whatever players are still doing that. In Hearthstone, we see more dimensions to him, right? It's all up to 10, up to 11. He's daring, he's smart, he knows how to swing a pick. So with Bran obviously being with the Explorer's League, I have to wonder if any of how he feels in Hearthstone could be taken forward. Take, for example, his companion from Hearthstone, Sir Finley Murgleton. He is a very sophisticated Murloc who is not only fluent in common, but also knows uh, 14 different dialects of Nurglish. Pretty cool dude, pretty wild stuff. And he's actually already in Stormheim and Mechagon, and he's just as insufferably posh. If you talk to him as a warlock with the scepter of Sargaris, he says, indeed, quite the dodgy bit of history you've got there, hmm? He's a, he's a fun little dude. And he kind of shows we've been edging towards some Hearthstone elements being brought into main Warcraft for quite a while now. Now, to see how this stuff really gets wild in Dragonflight, well, we've just got to talk about Reno Jackson. The last time we saw the Explorers League in-game, we were defending the Maker's Ascent in Uldum. Before that, Mechagon, actually. And both times, we met Reno Jackson. He was just sitting about. Most of us had no idea of his lore. Now, he claims to be a world-renowned archaeologist, but he's nearly been kicked out of the League a whole bunch of times. During the adventure through the Temple of Osiris, he was, uh, well, basically more trouble than he was worth. But the community noticed some things. His cardifact resetting your life pool seemed kind of like time magic. And then the Karazhan expansion introduced the menagerie mechanic, which buffed uh, Beast, Murloc, and Dragon cards. In the Karazhan cinematic, there's a hot tub, and in it is a cow, the Beast, a Finley Murgleton, the Murloc, and Reno, Reno the Dragon. Team 5 thought that this was kind of hilarious, so Dave Kosak wrote two different endings for Reno's arc during the Year of the Dragon. One human, one dragon. They went with the dragon script, and they began putting intentional easter eggs in the game, like the card Learn Draconic, which had Reno studying an old dusty book. The Year of the Dragon culminated with Rafam bringing the Plague of Undeath to Dragonblight, to resurrect Galakrond. In the final fight, Reno reveals that he's a blue dragon called Renegos, but he didn't even realize it himself, saying, I always knew there was something funny about me when I was left at that orphanage in that egg. There you have it. So if they're putting elements of this lore in the game, actually, I think that's kind of huge, because think about it. In Wrath, Malagos goes mad. We had to kill a bunch of blue dragons. Then, after the bombing of Theramore, they decided they had no kind of right to defend magic, and they basically just disbanded, right? Outside of the Clutch and Azuna, the Blue Dragons had just been at the edge of extinction, not really a formal group. But here's one who's been hidden under the guise of some dumb adventurer. Reno Jackson is literally in World of Warcraft, and it seems he's going to be in Dragonflight. I don't know, will we see him in his draconic form? If that does happen, does that maybe confirm more parts of this Rafam story? I'd say definitely not the Dalaran heist, or the super crazy stuff, but Reno being Renegos? Yeah. And if, if Reno is Renegos, then surely Rafam is going to be after Galakrond? Let's talk about Galakrond. This is where we stand. Rafam and Bran Bronzebeard are in a superhero versus villain face-off across Azeroth. They're both in Dragonflight. In Hearthstone, Rafam's big gambit is to resurrect Galakrond. We don't know who the big bad of Dragonflight is at this stage, obviously, but we know we're going to deal with the legacy of Galakrond. So maybe that could be a bit of a missing piece here. Everyone wants a piece of Galakrond. In Wrath of the Lich King, it was the Scourge, then the Twilights. In Dragonflight, there are the primal incarnates who pretty much worship the guy. When we discover that legacy of Galakrond, 
we're going to discover many factions fighting for the right to be his true inheritors or to control the power that somehow is still in his bones. And I'm fairly sure Rafam will be another one of those personalities vying for control. Bit of a wild card. And he's an ethereal. If Rafam is an ethereal, then, and I'm actually literally going off script here, can we not think about some of the ethereal schemes and odd things that have been going on over the last while? Like, why is there an ethereal, uh, or, um, yeah, one in the uh, Horrific Visions, who is getting, like, weird old god stuff from players. There's the whole thing with the Master and the Trial of Style. Could Rafam somehow tie into this? When there's a few ethereal characters talking about a Master, what if that actually was Rafam? And what about all the other stuff in Hearthstone about, you know, plagues of undeath and joyriding Dalaran? Well, I think those are just things that maybe people will one day tell down at the tavern. And that's the point of the Hearthstone lore. It's a bit more bombastic. It's a bit more larger than life. It's obviously not really supposed to be mega grounded, but it can feel surprisingly grounded in instances, I'll definitely say. But that's how I think we, we treat Hearthstone. We kind of remember that it is the tavern. The Renegos that we get will probably be a blue dragon with the weight of his doomed flight on his shoulders, and Rafam will probably be some bizarre dimensional thief who's doing some crazy stuff. Maybe he knows the brokers, maybe he's in with the other ethereals. So less of the actual madness of the sort that would kind of make WoW's story not really believable anymore, but certainly more of the core setting and actual fun that we've wanted for so long. So that's why seeing those data mining fragments suggesting that Rafam and Reno would be in this expansion, uh, honestly, were just kind of cool to me. Now, obviously, it's very possible that somehow none of this could be paid off. Yeah, totally, I admit that. Uh, so, you know, don't go pre-order the expansion base in this video, but I thought it was fun nonetheless. And I've heard from a few birdies that they've kind of liked field testing, just like little ideas and things in Hearthstone. Um, so, you know, why not? Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it interesting. See you next time.